Steve, I need your help to make my serverless application more reliable and ready for production. Uh, what reliability work have you done to it so far? Nothing. It's just a prototype app and it's not very reliable. Where should I even start, Steve? Um, well, some simple smoke tests may be a good first step. They are easy to build and easy to automate. Can't wait to hear more. Steve, you told me the other day that you have experience in reliability engineering. Yeah, uh, I was a site reliability engineer, or SRE, inside Google for over a decade. I worked on search, Android, YouTube, and cloud. Uh, now my job is helping developers understand how to build reliable systems on the cloud. Perfect. I have plenty of experience writing apps, but not really operating them in a production environment. And I have a prototype app here that many of my coworkers want to start using. Uh, what's the app? Our team built an app for tracking YouTube comments. It's been exploratory programming so far, so we haven't written any automated tests or anything like that. Uh, but people seem to like the prototype, so we'd like to make it into a real and reliable app. Okay, have you experienced any reliability problems with the prototype? <laughs> yes, uh, we actually did. A few months ago, YouTube changed a minor thing in their API. The app still kind of worked, but it was providing stale data for a month before we noticed the problem. Got it. Uh, well, you can make it more reliable by adding a few smoke tests. It's easy to do, so I recommend developers do it before they spend their time on other, more expensive reliability work. Okay, sounds good. Uh, why are smoke tests easy to add? Well, they're simple. Uh, they don't test everything. The name comes from electronic hardware testing. When you would uh, test with a new circuit board, you first plug it in to the power. If the board starts to smoke, you know the board is bad, and no further testing is required. Ah, right. Let's hope no smoke is coming out of this app. Uh, so, so I wonder if I already have a smoke test in my REST API of this application. So I have this handler here. It returns an OK when you send an HTTP GET to the URL slash test. Uh, yeah, perfect. Uh, we can use that as a smoke test. Uh, some people would call this a simple health check. When you send a request to that URL and you get an OK back, you know that your code was deployed and can receive requests. If you don't get an OK back, no further testing is required. You can even set up cloud monitoring to hit that URL periodically and alert you if it breaks. Oh, good idea. Uh, let me do that now. Uh, so let's see. First, I'll scroll down to monitoring, and then I'll click uptime checks. I'll click create uptime check. I'll give it the title health check. Uh, then I'll pick HTTPS, enter the host of my Cloud Run service. I'll enter test, as that's the path of my health check. I'll let it run every minute. That's the default. The response should contain the string OK. My health check should return a response with the status code 200 and everything is OK. So I'll leave all these defaults in place. Uh, next, I'll tell it to alert me. I don't have any alert channels uh, set up yet, so I'll create one here. Uh, I'll set it to alert me by email. Now I can go back and refresh the notification channels. Ah, there's my new email alerting channel. I'll pick that one. Done. Now it will send me an email if the slash test URL on my Cloud Run service returns a bad status code or if the status uh, response doesn't contain the string OK. So this will test that you haven't had a bad deployment or like if the container keeps crashing, but you could do more. Uh, you said before that your app uses the YouTube API? Yeah, uh, that's the part that broke a few months ago. Uh, this simple OK test would not have caught that, huh? Right. So now you can copy your simple health check into a new deep health check, which exercises the major part of your application. Maybe your code could hit the YouTube API. Yeah, uh, let me add that. Uh, it will call the YouTube API. I will ask the API for all videos in this particular playlist. And here I'll check that I got more than zero results back. And this method started throwing an exception before. If it does that again, it will be caught here and a 500 error will be returned. You probably have other system components as well. You could exercise them too. Yep, yep, I do have a database. Uh, should I add uh, code for that here in this health check? 
Actually, it's useful to put the different smoke tests behind different endpoints. That way, if there is a failure, you'll know right away which system component caused it. Ah, makes sense. Uh, let me add an endpoint for the database smoke test. Uh, my code could ask uh, which videos a certain user subscribes to. I'll add the code here. Oh, oh, but Steve, wait a minute. Uh, I don't know which users have added which videos in the application. And this could even change over time. How would the smoke test code know if the returned data is correct? Good question. Remember, this is only a smoke test and it's not a full integration test. We'll talk about those more in a future episode. But at this point, we're simply plugging in the power and checking to see if smoke is coming out or not. Uh, so you could call the database and just make sure that no exception is thrown. Ah, I see what you mean. Uh, just check, no smoke is coming out. Okay, I will tweak my code so it asks for user one, two, three, and that user probably doesn't exist, uh, but the code should be able to connect to the database anyway and run the query and return an empty result. And if the code can't connect to the database, an exception will be thrown and this endpoint will return a 500 error. Great. Uh, so now once you have one endpoint per major system component, you can monitor them as well with cloud monitoring or another tool of your choice. Right. I will add these new tests to cloud monitoring. Uh, it was really easy to write the smoke tests, Steve. That's right. Um, it's, it's easy to set up smoke tests on serverless platforms like Cloud Run. If you use virtual machines or Kubernetes, you have to make sure that you test every machine in your cluster. Uh, with serverless, Google hides that complexity. Got it. Uh, so I guess none of my smoke tests uh, so far check the JavaScript front end of my, my app? Yeah, that, that's another way you could improve your smoke tests. You could set up some basic regular expression matching to ensure that the page content is what you expected. For example, let's make sure that the footer shows up, and therefore we can pretty much expect the whole page was loaded. We're not checking any content from the database, just the content from the front end itself. We want your smoke test to be very limited in scope. Uh, okay, and it sounds like it could be a lot of work to set all these up. Yeah, uh, as you get more and more tests and your tests become more complex, you may eventually want some more tooling. Many companies build their own tools to organize and run many health checks on their systems. And there are also third parties that provide such tools. And there's an open source software for this too. Uh, there's one called Cloud Prober. Ah, I got it. That's a lot to think about. Um, so what would be the next baby step to make my app more reliable? Well, you already have basic smoke tests. You could run them continuously via cloud monitoring. Uh, when running these type of tests in production, sometimes they're called probes or black box monitors. Sometimes you'll see them called synthetic monitoring also. The goal is to have them run often enough to catch a real failure in your system quickly. So now you have set up automated smoke testing. You only spent a few minutes on this and your app is already in a much better place than it was before. Down the line, you could even add this to your CICD process to ensure that the system is working before you expose new code to your users. Sounds good, Steve. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Spend a few minutes and add some smoke tests to your app. If you have any questions or topic suggestions for future episodes, please add them in the comments. Until next time.